Hello everyone, in this session we are going to continue with our data structures in Apex series and in this video we are going to deep dive into the string class in Apex and later we will solve some string lead code questions using the string class methods in Apex. So let's start. Uh, starting with the basics as always, uh, what are primitive data types in Apex? So in Apex all the variables and expressions uh, we define have a data type uh, just like all the other languages. Uh, such as S object type, primitive uh, data type or enum. Um, a primitive data type can be of an integer, double, uh, long, date, date time, string, boolean, etc. So what exactly is the string data type? Be because we are going to deep dive into the string class. So in Apex, any set of characters surrounded by single quotes are uh, called a string and the data type of that is string. Strings have no limit uh, on the number of characters they can include. Instead, the heap size limit is used to ensure your Apex programs don't grow too large. And here is an example how to define a string in Apex. Now, uh, let's not waste any time. Important string methods in Apex. So I have uh, uh, collated a list of all the important string methods which I feel you should know. So first string method is a center. This returns a version of the current string. Uh, this returns the version of the current string uh, with the specified string padded on the left and the right side so that the current string appears at the center. So whatever string value you put here uh, and whatever size you put here, it will be appended to the left and the right side. Now the second method is caret. So caret at uh, uh, it returns the ASCII value of the character at a specified index. So we are going to use this when we do solve the lead code questions. The compare to as the name suggests it compares two strings and return value of 0, 1 or minus 1. Uh, contains substring if one string contains the other string. Uh, string dot format I, uh, I think which this we uh, did in the previous video as well. Uh, the formatting arguments uh, get replaced with the values uh, in the string to format index of a particular string this method returns the index of the first occurrence of the specified substring uh, string dot is blank uh, returns true if the specified string is white space string dot join uh, so let's say we have an iterate trans uh, you want to transform that iterable into a string so you can use a string dot join uh, provide an iterable and then like what is the separator Usually the separator can be a blank string, so add or a separator can be an hyphen, a semicolon, etc. Uh, string dot split. This is also an important method. Uh, you provide a regular expression here, and it splits your string into a list or uh, iterable. So uh, let's say you have a string. You want to uh, you want to have a, a, str a string array, a list of characters then you can provide a blank string here uh, in the regular regular expression uh, parameter and it will return you a string array. Then we have the string dot reverse returns a string with all the characters re reversed then string dot length. Uh, you can see the full string method uh, list in this documentation link. Uh, now, before moving to lead code questions, uh, an important topic is what are ASCII and what are Unicode? Because you need to know this before you uh, solve string questions. So ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It was designed in the early 60s as a standard character set for computers and electronic devices. So let's say you type A uh, uh, on your keyboard. Uh, computer represents it as uh, it is represented as 65 and 65 in then computer converts the 65 in binary language so that the computer can understand in ASCII A is equals to 65 and similarly Z is equals to capital Z is equals to 90 small a is equal to 97 and small Z is equals to 122 so these these are the ASCII representation of the letters Similarly, we have the ASCII representation of numbers and uh, special characters. Now, what is Unicode? So Unicode is another encoding standard that was created to address the limitations of the earlier character encoding such as ASCII. So uh, ASCII uh, only had uh, values for uh, English language, but Unicode also took consideration for regional language. 
सो लेट्स नॉट वेस्ट एनी टाइम स्ट्रिंग लीड कोड क्वेश्चन लीड कोड टू ओ फाइव आईसो मॉर्फिक स्ट्रिंग्स टू स्ट्रिंग्स एस एन टी डेटा माइन इफ दे आर आईसो मॉर्फिक सो टू स्ट्रिंग्स एस एन टी आर आईसो मॉर्फिक इफ द करेक्टर्स इन एस कैन बी रिप्लेस टू गेट टी सो लेट्स वी आर गिवन टू स्ट्रिंग लाइक दिस एंड इफ वी कैन रिप्लेस द करेक्टर्स इन एस टू गेट टी लेट्स ए Uh, basically, let's say we have s is equals to egg and t is equals to add. So we can replace e with a, and then we can replace g with d. So hence we can change the characters in s to uh, become uh, to make it uh, equal to the string t. But here, let's take this example. We have s is equals to f double o and t is equals to bar. Now we can change f to become b. We can change o. to become a but we have another o in s so o string been b double a it would have been true but since we have two two values repeating for o and we have three different three different unique characters here so that means we cannot replace the characters uh in s to t so uh let me show you my code which uh, i have taken this example s is equals to 4 and uh, t is equals to bar which we were discussing so i have created i have initialized two integer arrays uh where i have uh, provided in a number here so this means that apex will create me an array of 200 digits so and in apex everything is initialized as zero so now uh we have uh, first we will check whether the length is equal or not because if the length is not equal then we cannot uh, change the characters in s to t then we will iterate over the uh, string uh, the length of uh, string s and then we will check if uh, map 1 map 1 is the array 1 uh, map 1 of s dot caret i so uh, you remember in the uh, string methods i showed you caret i will return the ascii uh, code for the specified uh, letter so let's say if the letter is f what is the ascii code of f so it is like 95 so map 1 of 95 and uh, we have uh, defined the array uh, size to be 200 so we are sure that uh, uh, it won't throw a list index out of bound exception so we are checking if map 1 of s dot caret i is not equal to map 2 of uh, t dot caret i the first time both the values would be null so this uh, condition won't run this condition is not true then run this so we are putting the value at s dot caret i to be equal to i plus 1 and uh, map 2 dot t dot caret at i to be equal to i plus 1 let's say we have o o and a we are uh, replacing we are putting the value at uh, specified values now again uh, when we will when the value would be i is equals to 2 when the value would be i is equals to 2 we will have map of s dot caret at uh i that is uh this character o the ascii of o would already have the value populated as 1 while r is a new character since r is a new character this this condition would be true and we would print false hence this would false otherwise uh had it been uh the same character let's say a uh, this condition won't have this if condition won't have run and we would have print true so let me just copy paste it and let's execute it in the execute anonymous window so right now let me change it to bar foo and bar condition should be false and the answer is false and let's say if i do foo and e double a it should be true yo and the condition is true so we uh, in this uh, in this question we learned how we can use the cat dot uh, caret method of the string class now the next question lead code to 42 valid anagram anagram is a word or phrase that is formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase typically using all the original characters so let's say that ideally let's say if two strings are uh, anagram if the number of characters in uh, both the strings are the same so now how we can solve it using our string methods so i have solved it here I'm doing here uh so i have string s is equals to anagram and string t is equals to nagram 
Firstly, I'm checking if the length is same or not. If it is not same, then definitely these are not anagram. Then I'm creating a frequency array. Uh, so uh, in our question, it is written that uh, the strings S and T will only contain lowercase English letters. And we know that uh, the, the letters can only be 26. So that is why we have initialized our integer array with 26 characters. Now what we are doing, uh, we have a loop which iterates till uh, S dot length. And then I'm checking if S dot caret I minus 97 is equal equal to null. Then I'm putting zero here and similarly I'm doing for uh, t dot caret i. Uh, so what does, what does this statement mean? Uh, minus 97. So if I go back to my slide and I show you the ASCII slide, 97 is where uh, is the ASCII representation of a. Okay, so let's say that uh, let's dry run it. Uh, let's take uh, when i is equals to 0, that is the first iteration, s dot caret i is equal to a. So s dot caret i is equal to a and uh, the ASCII of uh, that value is 97. So 97 minus 97 would be 0. So at the 0th part, uh, we will be putting the value, we will be initializing the value. Uh, similarly, let's say if had s dot caret i would be b, then the value would be 98 because uh, the ASCII of b small b is 98 and then minus 91 then the we would populate the value at uh, first uh, index similarly for all the characters now what we are doing is we are increasing uh, one character here and then for the other uh, string we are decreasing one character that means in the end the value should either be zero or null in the frequency array. So after this loop is completed, I'm checking if in this array, in this array of the frequency array, which is of size 26, is there any value that is not equal to zero and not equal to null? If it is yes, uh, there is any value, then it is not a anagram because there is, there would be some character that is extra. So let me just copy this code and dry run it. Uh, so let me click on execute. And debug only. And boom, it returns true. So let me just remove some characters here. Uh, let's say I make it a four character gram and aram and it should return us false and answer is false boom so our code works perfectly and uh, in this uh, and in this uh, question we use the concept of ascii characters and uh, populated the frequency array now the next question that is lead code 125 which is a pal valid palindrome so I think you might already know what a palindrome is. If not, a palindrome is a string that reads the same from the starting and from the end. Those of a palindrome are uh, wow, noon, etc. So uh, what they have given us uh, as the definition is after converting all uppercase letters into the lowercase letters and re removing all non alphanumeric characters uh, it reads the same forward and backward right so uh, if we remove all the spaces we convert all the characters to lowercase and we remove all the special characters that is non alphanumeric characters then this string is a palindrome right so let me just so here is my code for this question so i've copied the same string which we, uh, we had on the lead code so uh, firstly, I'm using the delete white space method of the uh, string class to delete all the spaces within the string. Now I'm checking if after removing all the spaces, if it is a blank string, then it is true because blank string is also a palindrome. Now what I'm doing, uh, you, I'm using the split method. The split method converts a string into a list of string.
let's say you have a string man the split method would convert uh, since we provided the blank identifier it would convert it to man had there been some other identifier here so this the split method if you remember takes a regular expression so whatever uh, expression you put here uh, the, the string would split and gets converted to a list of string now what I am doing after I split this values I'm uh, I'm using a two pointer technique one pointer would uh, be at the start and one pointer would be at the end and uh, how do we find the end it would be size minus one the uh, size of the list minus one now I am a loop while start is less than equal to end that makes sense uh, you want the start should be less than end now what I am doing, I am I'm saying if uh, s value dot start, if the value at start, if it is not a alphanumeric. So we can find, uh, we can use the is alphanumeric uh, function of the string class to check if the specified character is alphanumeric or not. And then we, use, we are using the not operator. So we are checking if it is not alphanumeric, then uh, do start plus plus. Similarly, we are doing it for the end. If end is not alphanumeric, then do end minus minus. Now, since we are uh, moving start and end, we have to do a check again. So I'm checking if start is less than equal to end, then check if s value dot start is not equal to s value of end. Because uh, if you remember had uh, after uh, the specified character should should be an alphanumeric. So uh, we know that the value at start and the value at end would be alphanumeric. And uh, if the if these two values are not equal, then our output is false and we, we can break. Otherwise, just do a start plus plus and end minus minus. And then it will again start the iteration from line number 17. After all this, uh, we will print our output. And if uh, any of the value is not equal, output would be false. Otherwise, output would be true. So this is the string which I am taking. Let me click on execute and let's see what happens. Boom. That means this specified string was a palindrome. Let me take this and let's see uh, if this value is a, uh, it should, this string should return false. So this is the second example of the lead code and this should return false. Let me click on execute. Boom, answer is false. So we have su successfully solved lead code 125 as well. And in this and in, in uh, this uh, code, we understood different string functions like delete white space, the split function of string class is alphanumeric function of the string class. That's all for today's session and hope you learned something new and do subscribe to my channel for more such videos in the future. Thanks everyone.